Today's episode is brought to you by Overwatch League. Boop! Drop the beat! And welcome to High Noon Podcast, the competitive Overwatch podcast. I'm your host, The Blevins. With me, as always, is Deathblow. What's up, buddy? Not too much, man. I'm excited for uh, all the stuff we have to talk about this week. Yeah, it's like the opposite of the last couple the last, of weeks. I was going to say the last month, yeah. It's been, <laughs> it's been slow. Yes, it was not slow this weekend. At least not for me, because I was literally at BlizzCon. Rubbins intended. Yeah, jerk. Uh, well, on the plus side, I made my debut in the brought to you by section of the show. So I've is never, this really never the first time you've been in it? I have never so much has made a sound prior to the music. Wow. Uh, well, there's a first time for everything. Apparently. Yes, but before we get into all the BlizzCon stuff, let us go over a little bit of housekeeping like we tend to do. Uh, we've had an ongoing giveaway going on for quite some time the high noon challenge or high noon showdown i don't remember what i named it It was like a million years ago it's it's definitely the showdown and you can tell because one of them sounds really really good and you never (laughs) say it and the other one (laughs) sounds terrible and it's the only thing you've called it since we decided to call it the high noon showdown yeah the best thing is that i named it the high noon showdown in the first place Yeah, you called it that, then you started calling it something else, and I'm like, yo, we really, right, and like, we just have to call it Showdown, like, whatever you're saying sounds bad, and Showdown sounds awesome, but you, you've hated it from day one, so that's okay. No, I've actually liked it, I'm just kind of a bumbling idiot, so, hence why I started my own podcast. Um, Right, perfect. (laughs) We do have a winner, and first off, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who joined uh, Two winners. We have two winners? Yes. Oh, that's right. We do yes. have two winners. <laughs> <laughs> well, the winner of the T-shirt yes. is uh, at GG Harsha on Twitter. Uh, a Yes. Clap, clap, clap. If I had if I had a soundboard, I would cue it right now. <laughs> Congratulations from Soldier 76. There. You got a, you got a personalized thing from soldier 76 um <laughs> but yeah um harsha actually i i don't know the full story but i know at least at some point was a member of gosu gamers um who we've uh just been intimately and and involved and intertwined with ever since they started covering them and whatnot um and harsha's interacted with us on twitter before so that's that's great to see him win that uh, i will be sending him a message uh very shortly and uh yeah He'll be getting that. Uh, with that being said, uh, we wanted to, you know, we've been we've been holding out. We've been running that. Announce winner for, number two. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Uh, for those <laughs> for those of you who, who uh, aren't really, you know, who don't really know us at all or, or know how, uh, you know, numbers work or, or math or anything. <laughs> um, so the, the whole point of the Iron Showdown, it was mostly for fun, uh, but we wanted mm-hmm. to pit the co-hosts of High Noon Podcast against each other to see who would who would end up finishing better in <laughs> season two of competitive. And we have to say unequivocally <sighs> that Deathblow won. There's Championship. No no jokes about it. He won so much, in fact, that we can no longer queue together. <laughs> Because it's of true. the disparity in, in I'm also hoping here's my honest to goodness goal for how this season will finish. All right. Right now my Smurf account is level nineteen. Uh-huh. And I think if I put minimal effort in whatsoever, I might be able to get you beat on a second account. <laughs> I really wish you could see the camera right now because it's, it eludes <laughs> us directly into our second giveaway, um, which we'll be talking about in just a second. Um, but yeah, want to do another giveaway. Um, I don't know any of the details about what we're going to do. Probably going to be the same sort of thing with Gleam um, and, and using that as the platform. But I went to BlizzCon, like I mentioned before, and I got some stuff. One of those stuffs is Patchy Mari plush. And another one of those stuffs is another Pachimari plush. Um, and actually, another one of those stuffs 
is a Gan- what is it Ganymede? Ganymede plush. Um, <laughs> and I'm not. We're not going to give them all away now. We're only going to give one away now. But I don't want all this stuff. It's just going to take up room in my in my house. I don't need it all. You guys need it. So we are going to be giving away some plushies from BlizzCon. Ooh, there's also other stuff that I haven't even announced because I don't know what I have. I just have a. I literally, we went to BlizzCon. We packed an extra bag, like an extra duffel bag, inside of our giant, um, our giant like roll around bag. Yeah, and we filled the entire roll around bag with swag on the way home. That's good. And that is how much swag we got. I honestly, there were things I wanted you to buy me because I'm just like, ah, I'm never gonna Why get didn't there. You tell me? I'm just so because like I think you just had so many so many things to get. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not super I worried about you it. Man. Yeah, was one of the, was one of those things a uh, Patsy Mari plush? It a hundred percent was. Yeah, I really think uh, those are actually just going to be super valuable in the, <laughs> uh, in like a year. You know, when the game is actually in full swing, because yeah. we forget how young the game is. Like half the players that are going to play it in a year aren't playing it yet probably i'm That's completely true. making up numbers and so they're it's not even on their radar to have gotten it and they're gonna get super addicted to this game because it's a pretty great game and yeah. uh you know so they're just gonna really want this stuff and and when it's you know we talked a little bit before you went how blizzcon exclusive has always actually been blizzcon exclusive so yeah. if they never hit sale any other way the supply should should uh, be low enough that that's a, a pretty valuable item down the line. Yeah. So um, with that being said, we are going to be giving one of those away. Keep an eye out on Twitter. For those of you who are already following, you'll automatically see that when we tweet it out. And for those new viewers, you can enjoy the ability to see all of our giveaways <laughs> by following us on Twitter. So uh, yeah, that's going to be great. And uh, yeah, so Let's move right along. I'm sure Deathblow has definitely yeah. prepared for the episode. Super prepared. But in, knows exactly just, what's coming up. Just in case, just in case he hasn't, <laughs> I'm going to start uh, and talk a little bit about what I did last week. Now, a lot of what I did last week is going to uh, is going to tie into some of the other topics we did because we're pretty much only going to be talking about BlizzCon and BlizzCon stuff, and that's where I was. Um, but I did go to BlizzCon, and uh, I'm going to talk about some of the like non-announcement stuff, I guess. That's probably the best way to do it, right? Non-announcement, sure. non-tournament stuff. Um, that's all I did. All I did was tournaments, <laughs> non-stop tournaments. Actually, one thing I will say about, um, about BlizzCon is that it is two super action-packed days. There's probably about 50 hours worth of stuff to do each day that you're there. So it is tough to get everything in. Um, there were, I, this year I missed out on a lot of stuff. Um, and I also, uh, I didn't, um, I didn't mingle around with Overwatch people as much as I would have wanted to. Um, I did get to see, um, the night before the con went to, um, con before the storm at the Hilton. Uh, it was just a, a nice little, uh, like pre-party, uh, before BlizzCon was pretty sweet. Um, kick tripod, uh, of the payload podcast and Rosh, of uh, uh, of the payload podcast were both there. Um, saw both of them, which was really great. I didn't get, the, I didn't get the chance to stay, uh, for too long, sadly, but, uh, I did check that out. They had a panel on overwatch, which was great. And, uh, you know, I was like rushed off to the next thing. Cause I, I had like IRL friends. I had internet friends. I had all this. I had, I was like rushed around. Like it was like, <laughs> it, like, I feel like I haven't even gone to BlizzCon yet. Like it was, it was like done in, in 60 seconds. That was, that was what it was like. But, Amazing experience, guys. If you ever have the chance to go to BlizzCon, like start saving today. Like, if let's see how much if you saved, uh, let's see how many episodes are there? 52 episodes in a year. So, if you saved ten dollars every episode until next year, you can at least afford a ticket to get entrance into it. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe let's see if you did twenty dollars. Let's just say you save twenty dollars per episode every episode until <laughs> next year. You'll have enough money to maybe go to BlizzCon next year. Um, but no, it's honestly, a steep, steep price to meet you, man. Yeah, I know. It's uh, 
it's it's tough, but it it, it is awesome. I've got to say, um, I'll, I'll talk about more of the details of it. Uh, we also couldn't be much geographically further away. Yeah, literally which the opposite. Hurts quite well, a bit in the U.S. I'm sure. Yeah. Well. Yeah. 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 Uh, literally the opposite corner of the United States is where we are. Um, but a lot of people are a lot closer than us, so you know it, it, it's possible. If you have the chance, if you're on the fence and you have the means to do it, I 100 percent like 10,000 percent um, suggest you do it. And with that being said, I'm planning on going next year. Um, it, absolutely, like unequivocally, it'll be my third. Um, you know, my first year, it was like, you know, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what's going to go on. Never been before. I just kind of let the con sweep me away. And I was like, <laughs> I just did what the con wanted me to do. This year was a little bit different. Um we, I, you know, had the podcast. I uh, wanted to do. I had a couple of people I met um, that I wanted to talk with. That that went well, um, but it was mostly like, okay, I got to go see the Overwatch World Cup because, like, this is the first like big. It's the first big esports tournament that I've gone to for Overwatch. Um, you know, it's the first one. It's the first event at BlizzCon. You know, Pluppy was there, so that was exciting too. Um, but like there was a lot of stuff I didn't get to do, um, and there was a lot of uh, a lot of things outside of the con that I wanted to do as well that I didn't get to do. Just I think a lot because I just didn't plan it out. Um, I treated this year like I treated last year, and because of uh, you know the group I went with and some other stuff, we had a lot of additional plans that like threw cogs into everything. Don't get me wrong. Super fun, had an amazing time with everyone, uh, and I ten out of ten would run it back exactly the same again. But next year, I'm going to plan out some stuff, um, so I have like a structure of like I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to meet these people, I'm going to go to this party, I'm going to do blah, 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 and have like a scheduled BlizzCon, which I think will be better. Maybe it won't be, and then if it's not, I'll change it for 2018 BlizzCon. But that's the plan. Super fun, ten out of ten would go again, will go again, and uh, yeah. So Deathblow, did you do anything fun? this weekend <laughs> no i'm honestly it's been a rough week for me not in like a bad way like oh is he okay no he's just been salty all week um <laughs> we'll, we'll get into it more i'm not a big somber fan i don't like what's going on here if you've been following the show for a while i made one request of blizzard when sombra got rumored first to get stealth and they don't care and I don't, you know, blame them for that, but it doesn't affect my uh, disappointment mm. either. Uh, so, you know, but there's the football game last night has me wanting to, to <laughs> you know, stab somebody, and it's just not. Thankfully, we don't talk about politics on this show either. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm looking very, very forward to the escape of this episode. Mm. So let's let's not worry about what I did this week. True that. True that. But. One thing you were this weekend, and by weekend I mean right now, was prepared with yes. some iTunes reviews. Of course, because we always do those at the beginning, and why wouldn't I have them readily available? <laughs> so, uh, due to Biden, can you just go ahead and ban him so that I don't have to worry about it? <laughs> um, but yes, so uh, two five-star reviews here, guys. Thank you so much for these. KOS Precision said, loving the show, great analysis and content. It's definitely inspiring me to start a podcast of my own. I can't wait to hear you guys each week. That's really cool for me because I yeah. did not. Uh, it's still weird to us, guys, mm -hmm. that more than five people would listen to us when we talk into the microphones. Um so it's great to hear that we are inspiring you to, to make a show. Definitely let us know when you have your first episode. I'd love to hear it and get to know you as a, a listener and a host a little bit better. So definitely tweet at us when you do get your first episode going. Yeah, 100 percent. If you guys and if you have, uh, you know, any questions or anything, you know, hit us up, man. Definitely more than happy to. Uh, yeah, we're, we're not experts, some... but what, what knowledge we oh. have, we're more than happy to share. <laughs> this isn't my first podcast, okay? The first one was literally <laughs> me and Joe Shea rambling for like an indiscriminate amount of time with it, yeah, no direction and whatsoever. <laughs> it really, in that podcast, podcast like shaped every joke we've ever told. Yeah, um, it's also shaped I, basically I really like it, everything yeah. I've done 
in the last five years. In your whole, in your whole life for five years. Uh, the second review here, though, is a little bit lengthy, so I, I want to make sure I leave it a little time. Um, my apologies if I trip over it. I'm going to try to read it kind of quick, but uh, it's called, I don't know, there's like a title to it. And it's a, a geometrically, geometrically well defined competitive Overwatch newscast with the right length on tangents. I I love new, it. New and it is the new name of the podcast. So right. guys, hello and welcome, welcome to, the to it. It's been a lo- <laughs> the first of a episode geometrically, of a geometrically well defined competitive, competitive Overwatch newscast with the right length on tangents. I am your host, the Blevins. With me, as all <laughs> I'm doing yeah, that. That's that's pretty great. Confirmed. <laughs> Uh, the actual review here, though, is I've been a longtime listener and the other uh, of, to this and other Overwatch podcasts since the game released in May. However, High Noon is by far the one I look forward to the most each week. While it isn't the only Overwatch cast that covers the competitive scene, it is certainly the most succinct. The High Noon podcast hosts Blevins and Deathblow do a fantastic job of staying on the show's focus, and generally what tangents they go on lead to entertaining places due to strong chemistry and personalities. Both hosts also exhibit a great understanding of the scene and don't shy away from controversial opinions on rule sets, roster changes, or unexpected tournament results. Occasionally, the team have invited guests such as casters or even professional players for interviews, uh, namely Hex. These guests provide fantastic insight. And B&D, I love him referring to us as B&D, by the way, uh, <laughs> utilize their time and knowledge appropriately. The podcast is exactly what I want. Thanks, guys. You are welcome, my friend. Thank you so much for the kind words. Sorry if I, I skipped over a little bit, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Not many people say good things about us, so we relish it when you guys do. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was uh, that was amazing. Um, I'm also, B and D forever. Like that's what we. Yeah, that's B&D. that's our new name. Yeah, hosted oh, man, by. We, and we can have a we can have a segment where we go to Dave and Buster's, so we can have B and D go to D and B's. H N P hosted by D and <laughs> hosted by hosted by B and D go to D and B's. HNP B&B. B&B host HNP. Okay, we're done and... here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh, that joke. That joke. That's man, too good. Over... We're gonna we're gonna be talking about this more later on, we're, but we'll, like, we'll move on. We're our, we're at like minute ten, and there's been like fifteen memes already. So I, yes. I can't wait to see what. Or gonna... Overwatch today. He's got so much work to do. Overwatch today. It's just like frantically, like <laughs> frantically. Uh, photoshopping right now um but yeah we do have a lot to talk about um what i will say what i will leave the segment with is like guys those reviews like regardless of what they do for us like they, they absolutely help us uh in terms of like podcast analytics and stuff but like all that aside like the reviews mean the world to us uh like that those types of like heartfelt reviews really do make coming to the show every week worth it um just from a personal level like that they're amazing um and you know, if not for nothing, if you want to hear us read your review on the show, always feel free to leave us a review on iTunes, and we will read it, good or bad. Though we haven't really had any bad ones. There's literally not been a review that uh, other than five star ones. Like we're we're at a hundred percent five star, which which means a ton to us as well. Yeah. But the one thing I will say in these reviews is people aren't really bringing the funny. That's true. There hasn't been a ton. Of, I think the last <laughs> funny one was from Prova the Nova, who left one of our first. Who left one yeah, of I don't know. First. I don't even remember that one as funny for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. I, I remember the name being funny, and the person that made that name probably being a genius. Um, but let's move on uh, to the tournament talk. So, uh, su- as, to the surprise of no one, we're going to talk about the Overwatch World Cup. Uh, the big boy, the big one, the first one. And, you know, I, I talked smack about it for weeks. Hex and I w- just went off on the Overwatch World Cup. It's not eSports. It's not that. I take it all back. I, I, <laughs> I take every single bad, non-completely positive thing I said about it back. It was great. Um, being there was amazing. I can only imagine the cast was just as good because I watched some of the cast beforehand, some of the casts beforehand, uh, top notch production value. The stadium was amazing and I will be posting some pictures. Um, we can probably upload those to the website, right? Probably. If not, they'll be on Twitter. Um, I got a couple of pictures of the arena. I think I have a video uh, of the arena. I got a bunch of pictures of me like really like right uh, behind Pluppy when he was getting interviewed. That was pretty great. Um, 
Side note, best part of the Overwatch World Cup was uh, f- uh, Sweden was walking out like before the match was starting, and Pluppy walks out. Uh, Tavik, for those of you who who didn't watch uh, during the beta, Tavik walks out, and I just go, Pluppy lives! Like, as loud as I can. And the, like there's just like a dull <laughs> roar, so like I was very clearly heard. He just like looks over and starts laughing. <laughs> That's super uh, funny. Yeah, I was I was quite uh, I was quite pleased with that. But no, the 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 tournament was amazing. Let's go in for those of you who didn't watch it. Let's go over the results. So the top four, a little bit of an unexpected top four. Uh, not necessarily the people in it, but where everyone placed. Well, where three fourths of the <laughs> teams placed are are uh, uh, suspect. Uh, if you would have asked us if this would have been the result, I would have probably guessed that three of the four teams would have been in the top four. Yep. But I would not have guessed that. Well, we'll we'll talk about it. Um, so <laughs> the top four was Russia. No one really would have guessed. Uh, South Korea, Finland, and Sweden. And South Korea defeated, and defeated is really a light word to use for what ha- happened, defeated Russia 4-0 to zero in the finals. Oh boy, it was it was insane to watch South Korea play. Um, it was a whole new world, a whole fantastic, a whole new fantastic point of view that South Korea showed us. Um, Death, did you happen to ca- how much of the uh, the finals did you catch? You know, I, I watched the whole finals, but I literally like it just. As good as South Korea was, I'd spent a good amount of time being impressed by them already mm-hmm. throughout the weekend. Yeah. And I just felt like I knew the result going into the game. Oh. And I, I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So it wasn't the best Overwatch to me the finals as it played out. Great. No, and, and which is unfortunate, but at the same time, not much that, that really could have been done about it, I don't think. Um, so I, I just don't remember really like anything yeah. about it. But I can I saw tell you it. exactly what the finals was. It was Russia struggling and not able to capture a single point, and <laughs> then uh, and then Korea immediately capturing the first point. Yeah. For reference, the finals the, the finals was supposed to go until uh, two thirty, and it uh, ended at one thirty. So just a complete hour just gone. Uh, so really not a, not a great finals. Our match of the week actually was the bronze medal match, which was Finland versus Sweden. Um, and that, that is a really great match. I'm not going to spoil it for you here. Go watch the match of the week, uh, Finland versus Sweden, the bronze medal match of the Overwatch World Cup. All I'll say is that it goes very late into the it goes very late into the series and the series goes very late into the map and you don't know who's going to win until the very end. That's the reason why I'm not spoiling it. I mean, you can you probably know or you can just check anyway, but I do suggest if you haven't checked it out, absolutely watch that match. Really like literally had me on the edge of my seat. And I was cheering incessantly for Sweden the entire time. Um, (laughs) And that actually leads me to another point uh, that I alluded to you earlier that I was going to talk about, uh, but we haven't actually talked about it all. And that was the crowd at the Overwatch World Cup. Now, myself and as well as Deathblow, we've been longtime sports fans ever since we were little kids. Uh, you know, grew up on sports, grew up playing sports, grew up watching sports, you know, a death blow more than me now, but death blow still very into sports um, and, and watching sports. So we've kind of got an idea of how sports culture is. You know, you pick your team and you root for your team. Mm-hmm. And regardless of, you know, you ban dude abiding from your chat yeah. for saying <laughs> stupid things that should never be said out loud. Exactly. You, right. you defend your team to the death. And you root for your team no matter what. And I'd go as far to say you boo the other team. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, you are you at home? Yeah, exactly. You defend your house. Exactly. Of course you do. So that's what that's what I want to say about the chat. Or not the chat. The, the Not the chat. The crowd at the Overwatch World Cup. So I clearly was rooting for Sweden the entire tournament. So anytime Sweden would do well... I'd go crazy. The whole crowd would go crazy as well because, like, watching Sweden play was amazing. But 
here's what here's what really was interesting. And at the time, it was it was really like it was like a cognitive dissonance to me. Um, but it, it it was really weird to me. So we cheer for Sweden. I would cheer for Sweden. I'd be going crazy anytime you know Pluppy or IDDQD or anyone would would do anything. I'm going crazy for Sweden. And so would everyone else. But here's the thing. Anytime Sweden's opponents would do something good, if it was just a good play, like a, a really nice headshot or like a, a really great alt or something, the crowd would go just as crazy. The same people in the crowd would go just as crazy for both teams. That's weird to me. And I think it's very a very interesting thing with esports is that, or at least with Overwatch esports, I don't think we've really quite created that team versus team sort of dynamic. I think Overwatch, like the philosophy of Overwatch, is like very inclusive. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's it it's got uh, different characters from all over the world, different races, ethnicities. Uh, you know, robots, gorillas. Um, it's it's a very like inclusive game, and everyone's welcome, and everyone's everyone's great. That does not quite play into the normal sports psyche. So it's very interesting to see if that's going to translate uh, into one of the things we're going to be talking about in a little bit. Were you there for USA versus... No. Uh, the, oh, man. See, because that, I think, would have been more your traditional sports right. environment because uh, it, was, it was a literal home field advantage. Right. You know, and it was, I, I really, you could tell the crowd was very into it and everybody was rooting for, but I get your point. And I, well, the one thing I'll say is you won't have to feel near as uncomfortable about booing whoever we're rooting against the first time me and you are at an esports event. Oh yeah, we will be booing. Because I will be savage. Twitch chat has nothing on a chat where people that follow the NFL yeah. are making fun of each other. Oh, yeah. I have seen the the meanest, most vile things ever go between fans of opposite <laughs> teams and rival teams and things yeah. like that. Like it is not for the faint of heart. Like I would yeah. never let my mom see any of the Facebook <laughs> comments, like, you know, conversations that yeah. I'm having and things like that. And that's, not quite the level. I don't think esports will ever get there because it's just not. Well, I mean, there's I literally it would have decades. To be so... There's literally decades of history behind it too. Yeah, and that we'll we'll talk about the the league and everything that that entails. But that's something like that has to facilitate true team loyalty before yeah. you'll ever get anything like that. I mean, I would. I don't know. I, I, I had to live in a, opposing territory for yeah. a football season one time. Like I had to live in Patriots country yeah. uh, during a football season one time. And it was like challenging. And I was worried about like getting arrested for getting into a bar fight or something <laughs> like that because I can't watch my mouth when somebody says something about the new England Patriots. I can't do it. And uh, it, it's just, I don't, I don't even know what it is about sports and why it's so different, but I think it's just the, the kind of individual, uh, feeling that that video games has is you're a yeah. member of a team, but it's just it's uh, something about it. It's not the same. Yeah, no, and and like I think on on some level they probably don't want to facilitate like the animosity towards it because like it can get into a bad territory, like you said. But mm -hmm. I do want to see like at, at the end of the day, like if you're not like if you're not rooted, like you can if you're if you're only passively rooting for a team and you're like okay if Sweden wins that's great but like I just want to see good overwatch like that is not going to create the same sort of visceral reactions and 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 by proxy the sort of devotion and dedication to the game that you're going to see out of sports you know take a look at the world series this weekend the cubs win for the first time in over 100 years people go absolutely insane there's like uh, you know, 90 plus, you know, like, like 90 plus year old uh, guys that like see the Cubs win the World Series for the first time. Spoilers for people who are not caught up on the World Series for some reason. Uh, uh, but like they like have like I'm seeing these like old men crying their eyes out because they see the Cubs win the World Series. Like if you're only passively caring about like the team that wins and you're not picking a team and like, you, okay, you don't necessarily have to boo the other team. Like that's your own choice, but like you should be rooting for your team much harder than the other team. Like, okay, I understand like there's some plays that like I was not rooting for Finland, but when Himsey got those hooks, I was like, <gasps> Oh, like, like that is different than like being like, yeah. Every time, like, something good happens, like, regardless of the team. Like, no, pick a team. I'm saying it here. 
pick a team. Like you don't have to pick it right now, but like when you're watching a match, even if it's even if it's just arbitrary, just for the fun of it, to make it more exciting for you and more exciting for the sport, pick a team to watch and root for that team full on and even have a little bit of fun booing the other team. I yeah, I really want to see esports get to a place where it's okay and you're not like if I go to an esports event, I'm going to boo the team I don't want to win. Yeah. It's it's a real it has an impact on their play yeah. to have a, a hostile crowd, mm-hmm. you know, showing their displeasure mm-hmm. at you and that's part of it. That's what we're here for. And uh, I'm I'm gonna do that. So I really hope that the the crowd catches up and do that because it's disheartening to hear that there's no booing. And I, I'd be there worried about a, catching. There looks. was not even a little bit of booing. And like I said, it was like just it was basically Start just while, people I'll were. Listen. Oh, there goes my follow alert. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> sorry, podcast people. Um, but you can always check us out live 7 p.m. Mondays. <laughs> twitchtv slash Um it, it was disheartening. Yes, to see people like just rooting for like general good overwatch play like no this is not a highlight video this is a match this is a competition root for someone care about who wins that is what is going to help like you don't have you don't have to be me with football and i literally first time in my life this has ever happened i swear to god i almost called a doctor today i was so mad (laughs) and yelling and screaming at the game last night i got a nosebleed I swear to swear to God, I got a nosebleed. I was so pissed off watching the football game last night. Oh man, that's awesome. Uh, but and you don't have to be that that bad, guys. You but don't you can, have to it be is bad. It's okay to root against people. Here, like they are, here's what they, I want you to do. Goes. Next time you watch, next time you watch an Overwatch match, even if it's just a, a you know a GoSu Gamers Weekly, if it's uh, you know an ESL Pro match, if it's an APAC channel, like whatever it is. Pick a team that you want to win, whether it's in a specific match or for the whole tournament, and root for that team and care about that team, even if it's just superficially. Pretend to. Fake it until you make it. Pick Rogue, for instance. I'm just going to give you one to pick. Root for Rogue. <laughs> just root for I'll give Rogue. you one. Root for Cloud9. Root for Cloud9, the American heroes featuring yeah. Mendo. Right. Um, root-, <laughs> <laughs> root for Cloud9 or root for Rogue. I'll be Team Rogue and Deathblow will be Team Team Cloud Nine, so that every time they play against each other, we'll both be dressed in our respective teams' colors, and we will be screaming at the top of our lungs at each other. Oh and yeah, it'll be way more fun than us just both being like, "Yay!" Because Overwatch Pluppy's garbage, played. and you have to I deal with that. Fight you, you over the sh- internet. <laughs> I will fight you this over is, the internet. This is this is literally what it should be when your fa- when your buddy's a Cloud Nine fan and you're yeah. a TSM fan or what you know whoever it is yeah. and, and you you sh- it should be like that guys it, it's and it's okay that it is I don't will feel say bad. that my backup team is Ninjas in Pajamas because when he's not playing against Sweden and uh, and Tavik I am rooting for him. See, he he he's probably my second favorite player. Right, and then that's why they, yeah, they're a good a good choice too because you know they have so many players who can't aim that they just have to come up with comps that just play all tanks, you know. Yep. So that's that's a good one. You would pick them. I can see why they'd be your heroes. Yep. Um, but let's move on. We still have a lot to talk about. Why don't we? Oh, let's break it down. Yes, let us break it down. Um, we've got a lot to talk about. We do. Quick disclaimer, I have no problems with any of the teams I mocked. I was just doing it to prove a point and <laughs> and kind of foster that uh, that rivalry. So <laughs> I don't want to, like, piss off any players out there. You know what? I do want to piss off players. Uh, yeah, Hamzy, You heard it here. No, I like You're Hamzy. not very good. Oh, wait. Yeah, you're the one we like. Yeah, Hamzy. <laughs> also, Hamzy, open invitation. Take that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, t- take that. Uh, you're going to be like, yeah, Himsy, you're bad. And all of a sudden, you're just going to hear a knock on your door and a hook is going to fly out and just rip you off. <laughs> uh, yes, but let us break it down. We have a lot of stuff um, that happened. We got Sombra. We finally got Sombra revealed at BlizzCon. And Yay. I'm not going to go through the whole controversy of the ARG. This is what I'll say about it. I think the idea of an ARG is really cool. I think they overdid it, and the execution was a little bit off. That's all I'm going to say about it. Um, however, watching it at, at BlizzCon, even though I'm pretty sure if we look back, I did call that BlizzCon was going to get hacked by Sombra in the middle of the opening ceremony. I did say that. Um, this is the part where I edit me in saying that. 
I'm probably not going to do it anyway. Um, but <laughs> it was kind of cool because they're like talking about Overwatch, and then they're like, now we're going to talk about what happened in Overwatch last year. I'm like, we kind of already did that. I don't. I really don't want to watch this video. <laughs> and then it's like, it, it was great because we're watching it. And, like, Jeff Kaplan's talking, and they're doing this. And then you just hear that, like, blip, like a little bit of a blip. And people are like, <gasps> and then it goes back to normal. It's like, okay, maybe it actually – it's like maybe it actually was, um, like, an actual, like, technical glitch. And then it blips again, and then the crowd just starts going crazy. And then we see the Sombra uh, reveal, and it's like, okay, that's awesome. Yeah, I thought they did a really good job with that. I actually saw a video. Of, I don't know if it was you. It might have been. I think it was a different one, though, that like specifically had the whole. Yeah, um, I was actually streaming thing. it on Periscope. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and literally when the Sombra thing happened, my phone died. So Sombra actually oh, hacked my phone. She, that rip indeed. Uh, so I saw somebody whose phone didn't didn't screw them over and ruin good content. Uh, <laughs> and they kept it going the whole time. And it was really, I thought it was really cool how they did that. Obviously, you know, the a video game is a great place to have a, a hacking character. Yeah. Uh, it's just so already intertwined into the uh lingo everything like that like it takes minimal explanation and effort for us to understand what's going on uh with the character and to understand her a little bit so i thought they did a really good job with it it was a really good uh, animated short it had been a while since we'd had one of those Mm -hmm. so i was really happy to get a full-fledged one instead of like the anna one i don't think she she didn't get an animated short she just got like a little intro video Mm -hmm. that showed her abilities being used once and that was it yeah, it was uh, it was really awesome though. So um, definitely check that out. Um, but we got Sombra, and she's actually live on the PTR right now as we speak. So go ahead and mm-hmm. play that on the PTR after you finish listening to the rest of the episode, or um, while you finish, or while you finish. You can do both multitasking at its best. Um, but there's a couple of videos and a couple of posts. Um, I will post them in the show notes. Um, there's a video of what Sombra can and cannot hack slash uh, um, what's her alt called. EMP blast. Yes, um, I'm going to post the video. Um, the I believe his name is Your Overwatch or something like that. Let me just let me just double check uh, so I'm not misquoting. Um, yeah, I watched this episode or yeah, this video it's before Your Overwatch. Yeah, and I watched this before the episode, and uh, I, I've got to say, make sure you watch this if you you want to be competitive, if you want to play Sombra and ranked when she comes out. You have to know this stuff. I watched it right before the episode, and I am, am I think more confused now about what she can and cannot have. There's or, basically or no consistency to it. You just have to know. There's a, yeah, there's like then, very small bits of consistency, but then there's some things that using that logic you would think would happen, and they don't. So right. just watch the so video. It's, it's definitely very confusing, and none of that is the fault of the people that made the video. They did a ton of work and, oh, and yeah, a ton of effort. The video was made very well. It's not confusing right. because of them. It's big, confusing because of Blizzard. <laughs> yeah, big, big props to them. I honestly think it's going to be outdated. Uh, so it's probably there's going to be some adjustments to the hacking, I would think, uh, yeah. because it's so inconsistent. But we'll see. There's not any well, I mean, necessity like that they similarly do similarly inconsistent things in Hearthstone that have been that inconsistent since the game was released so right yeah and they just came out with an advanced rule book and said well you didn't look at the advanced rule book so that's how this works yeah, yeah. no uh, <laughs> it makes it's not consistent it's just there um and also uh there's a, a separate like another like uh video about Sombra and her backstory that's also on the Blizzard website so I will be linking all of that stuff, or at least some of it, uh, in the show notes, so you can check that out. Um, also, there's a Reddit post that goes over what you can and can't hack as well. I'll post that if you don't want to watch the um, the actual update. But we actually, um, it was more than just Sombra that was added to the PTR notes. And um, I'm just going to go through, since we do have like, so much stuff to go through, I'm just going to go through some of the, uh, some of the changes on here. Um, or maybe I don't have these things. I'll get us started, and then you'll get yeah. to the link and, and get it going. So the yeah. first one is the arcade mode. Oh, so yes. So the arcade mode is a, a really a whole new kind of section of the play menu, and I'll just read the description here. Discover brand new ways to play Overwatch in the arcade. Choose from a variety of regularly rotating game modes, maps, and rule sets that don't quite fit into quick play or competitive play. Whether it's one-on-one duels, 3v3 skirmishes, or alternating selections of brawls, or special rules like no hero switching, you should have no problem finding a game that fits your mood. Uh, Experience is earned just like any other mode, but you can also earn arena-specific rewards like loot boxes. 
Yeah, so we're getting loot boxes for playing the brawls. So basically what we always uh what we always wanted, right? We wanted to be rewarded for playing the the brawls. Well, I will say this, actually it's not the brawls that you're getting rewarded for because I got on there last night and you get I got a loot box for doing the 3v3 skirmish for winning a 3v3 skirmish mm. and then I got a loot box for winning a 1v1 duel. So mm. it was not the the brawl modes didn't have any rewards attached to them. Uh, okay, so those are. I think they're just attached to the ever, arcade, but... aren't they? Uh, it... No, they were specific they to the not... mode. Oh. I the the only way I can describe it is it was like selecting a game mode from Star Wars Battlefront, and I don't know if you ever played that or no. not. I don't even think it was super super popular, but uh, it just had a very I don't know the feel of it just reminded me of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. There was like all these squares of different sizes yeah. and if you're windows 10 and you look at your start menu it looked kind of like that if you resize <laughs> things and there was different modes and, and two of the big ones it was 3v3 1v1 now I, what i don't know yet is if those are a daily reward a weekly reward what they are and how when they'll rotate because i assume what gives you a loot box won't be the same thing every week but i don't know Obviously, yeah i i remember them talking thing. about this and actually due to biting brings it up uh you also i think you probably get one loot box per mode but then you also get a loot box for three wins in the arcade, just in general, just regardless mm-hmm. of mode, up to three a week. So okay. you get nine wins in the arcade, whether it's all nine wins or 1v1, or there's a mix of brawls, 1v1s, and 3v3s. You can get up to three loot boxes, uh, one per three wins. So it's pretty awesome, honestly. Um, more loot boxes is always great. And, like, I'm super excited Um for a number of reasons for the 1v1 mode, though I wish they would have put it on King's Row um, instead of the new map, which is called something Antarctica. Echo Point. Echo Antarctica. Point Antarctica, Antarctica, which is where May is from. Um, and it's officially an arena map. Yeah. Um, what that means is it's a, a 3v3 sized map. It is much smaller than your average map, and uh, or at least I get that impression anyways. It's kind of built like a cough point. Mm-hmm. And it's you know it's it's mirrored you know mm-hmm. so everything's kind of the same mm-hmm. and there's not really an advantage that way so I don't know that that's what it reminded me of I didn't there's zero uh, health packs on the map oh really um, yeah so it's it's huh. interesting um, I like the the feel of the map like the obstacles the you know the the different levels to mm-hmm. it there's like it's only like three vertical levels to the map oh, in, wow. in a lot of ways that's pretty and neat. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a really interesting map. It's a lot of fun. Um, I, I I'm really I haven't played it enough to really form a firm opinion, but mm-hmm. I, I thought it was cool. But I also I'm just like, I'm still me. You know, I didn't ever play Brawl because it's just not right. Overwatch. You know, it's not. It, it's very team deathmatchy on a mm-hmm. small scale, mm-hmm. and I always preferred kind of medium to large sized team death matches mm-hmm. when I, when I played them. Yeah. So, uh, but if you really, you know, if you were a team fortress two player and you played, you know, real small maps or, or if you're, you know, a counter strike player and, and you liked smaller games, five V five or something like that, you know, this will probably uh, be something you would really, really enjoy. I, I liked it. I thought it was cool. I just, I'm not a team death match player. I don't, I don't enjoy that mode and everything about it felt very much like that. To me. Yeah. See, I, always loved team deathmatch like I, that's pretty much all i ever played when i played shooters uh, back in the day so i was like super excited about this not as much i mean the 1v1 i think is funny just because of some of the things that we've talked about before um mm-hmm. though again i wish it was on king's row uh but the 3v3 i think is actually really cool um i think that could you know that has Do you want potential. details on how they work i don't know how much you know or, yeah i or, or i actually wanna... didn't get the chance to play the PTR. Um, yeah, it was down yesterday. for most of the day yesterday, yeah. but after the game, I was able to get in and try everything out and mess around a little bit. Um, I, I even got to play some Sombra. I only did it in the arcade mode because I, I just didn't have a ton of time and I wanted to try the new stuff. But so the 1v1 duels are actually first to five wins. Yeah. Okay. And you get a random hero assigned to you every round and you're both that hero. Yeah. Um, so you first game I tried of it, first round, Symmetra versus Symmetra. Like, the worst experience (laughs) humanly imaginable. Um, I I actually died because he was just stealthy enough, and, like, while I was setting up turrets, got his beam locked on me. I spun around, and, like, 
I, you know, he only had like 20 HP or whatever when he killed yeah. me, but he just got the beam connected faster, and, yeah. and uh, we, I didn't get the fight to my turrets, and it was weird, and it was similarly weird with like, so there's no ultimates either, and except oh, okay. for when you are in the diva versus diva fight, and you you knock him out of mech, and you think I can't lose, but then randomly she can use her ultimate once she's knocked out of zero suit mode, and she <laughs> can get back in. So I, there was definitely some weirdness to it, but it's it's first to five wins. And, uh, you know, you're locked into the same random hero as your opponent. So it was really, really interesting. The time I lost, I thought it was weird. I only won on, like, McCree and Soldier. And if I had to pick what I'm worst at, it would by far be hit scan. So I thought that was really funny. <laughs> yeah. The three, yeah. The 3v3 is, uh, I want to say, best of three. Uh, and, it, and it's the same map. Obviously, everything's mm -hmm. on Antarctica. I assume there's going to be a variety of other uh, arcade maps or arena maps, they're called. Mm -hmm. um, but, and that was essentially no respawns. Again, there's no health packs, anything like mm -hmm. that, but you have teammates and they can heal and things like that. So, uh, it, that one was a, a lot more straightforward, but when I did the 1v1, I kept finding myself going, like, when does this end? I'm like, best best of you know best two out of three was my first thought and I'm yeah. like, no okay so we'll go again uh and then it's like best three out of five no no okay and then i'm like well once we won the fourth and then it said match point i'm like yeah you're random like uh, probably <laughs> if i were to rank him going into it how i thought it would work like first of five wouldn't have been yeah that's really anywhere on my radar but it was fun yeah 3v3 seems like it's interesting it actually like depending on how it shapes up like I could see it. I mean, I don't think it's gonna it's gonna like become its own competitive mode. Like, I don't think they're gonna do tournaments of it or anything. But like, it seems like it could be that type. Like, that game mode seems like it's uh it's unique and interesting enough to like warrant actually playing. Like more. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see some one off tournaments of it occasionally. Mm -hmm. You know, you might get just a random three v three tournament go on. Um, some smaller orgs or entities might want to do something like that I, I could see that being around a little bit but it's not going to pick up any any head of steam i don't think on any of these things no. but the 3v3 was the one where it really felt like you know there's there's still strategy here you know I, yeah I, if it was just a shooter and all about mechanical skill i wouldn't be here i i play it for the strategy and mm -hmm. the uh the strats or not the strats the comps and and things like that like that's what i enjoy the most about it yeah. so it, 3v3 was the best one to me because it's the one where that still kind of came into play yeah i definitely think that you can you can definitely build around like i think you could have some cool comps with that actually um and i do think it like it could be you know maybe that's like the preferred like amateur or like casual tournament where it's like mm -hmm. it's much easier like if you don't have a team it's much easier to go in and and either find like a smaller team like just two other people to do a 3v3 tournament or to just get thrown in with some random people it's, it's probably much easier logistically speaking to field a 3v3 team and, and to set up a 3v3 tournament than it is a 6v6 um so maybe it's also far easier to carry as an individual so i think that that's true it's really interesting that's true. like i had a i had a the, the one i won I, I literally on two of the three times we won i landed i went three for three on hooks in the round and just mm. and yeah. mercy's dead and you hook roadhog and then you shoot him 17 times and he finally dies yep. uh but once you land the hook first you're you're kind of in the in the zone on that fight you'll make him heal first and then you you just keep firing um and then i hit the the third guy it was like a tracer i think and i, I couldn't even believe i hit the hook my, myself but <laughs> um yeah, so I, I I don't know. There's a lot to that, and I think three v three is really the the super interesting mode of the new ones. Yeah, I think one v one is going to be fun if you just want to like go mess around, and if you want to be like, dude, one v one me. They actually Jeff Kaplan brought that up in one of the panels. He was like, <laughs> a lot of people are going to want to say that they're better than you, and that they're blaming this, that, and the other thing. Well, they can no longer blame anyone but themselves in this mode one v one. So that was kind of funny. Um, and yeah, that was that was uh, really awesome. Um, was there any other? I don't think there was anything else revealed at BlizzCon that's in the patch notes, right? Well, not that's in the patch notes, uh, patch notes, but we have the Oasis map that's oh, yes. kind of in the pipeline a little bit, and I actually haven't seen any really visuals or anything like that. So all they, I'm really hoping you can kind of fill in. Was yeah. there any video, anything at all? All they about showed that? was just like 
basically like screenshots of like okay. what it looked like, not like the map layout or, or, or like a video of like anything going through it or anything like that. It was basically just like stills of uh, <clears throat> the map. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Uh, it's in somewhere in the Middle East, I believe. And it's like a, in the middle of a desert, but it's like a built up town in the middle of the desert. Um, and the one thing of note, like there wasn't a lot, there wasn't a lot of details and they're like, it's still in progress. Like the art isn't even done for it. The one thing that I will note that they said, A, it's a King of the Hill map. Uh, and B, one of the points has a jump pad. Like a, you go mm-hmm. on it and you mm-hmm. bounce up. Um, and the thing that they mentioned, that the devs mentioned is like, you don't think it's like super insane until you hear the jump pad go off and then you hear it's high noon and you're like oh god where is he he's in the sky <laughs> so like like that that that's awesome i think there's a lot of cool possibilities and like how high can you get with these characters that shouldn't get that high like i don't know it, it's going to be interesting to see what the jump pad brings and like the implications of the jump pad it's like okay where do we go from the jump pad? Like, can we have like speed up pads? Can we have, you know, other sort of like augmenters of the battlefield? Who knows? Um, I'm waiting to see the highlight videos of Reinhardt going off the jump pad and oh, then charging man. in midair to, to, to hit a fair Oh, the sky. Yeah. man. Like, just crazy things like that. Like, that's, that's what I'm most excited to see, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I 100% <laughs> agree. That's amazing. Or like the, like, going like bouncing up with the Reinhardt and then just hearing hammer down and just crushing everything. Then um, it, or it like takes like a long time. Like you hear the sound yeah. hammer down and then it's like three, two, one <laughs> smash. Yeah. You don't know <laughs> where it's going really to be. Yeah. yeah. I want to see a map where there's like multiple, uh, where there's multiple, um, uh, bounce pads and you don't know where they're, where they're going. Like where they're coming from, like they could be coming from any direction. Who knows? Um, but it's very like interesting. One of the to see Donkey Kong pads. cannons that just fires you in a yeah, random direction. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That would be interesting. Yes, barrels are now introduced into <laughs> into uh, Overwatch. But yeah, that that's awesome. Bet you Winston likes him. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Did somebody say peanut butter? Um, but we also, um, going back to the patch notes, we saw some other um, patch changes. Uh, I'm going to post the link to the patch notes. Um, the only one, I, I like, can't find it right now for some reason. I don't want to waste a bunch of time. Uh, the one thing I do remember is that Farah got, um, she got, like, boost increase. She can, like, jump longer now. Did you see that? Oh, on the PTR? Yeah, no, I've PTR. honestly, I'm so far behind on the PTR hero updates, and they said they plan on being so fluid with them that I, yeah, I it just getting to the point now where Halloween's over and I'm just going to have time to, like, log in and play and not care that I'm not ranking up or, yeah. or getting loot boxes. So I'll finally get over to the, the PTR. Yeah, 100%. Once we... I'll post the, the notes in the, uh, I'll, I'll post the link in the show notes so you guys can check it out, but we're not going to go over. One, like you said, they're so fluid with the changes, so, that, like, going over in depth, like, what the, the changes are doing and then having them kind of revert them back is kind of a... There's, it's, it's a, there's one thing here on the patch notes I want to make sure we highlight, because I think it's my favorite update that they've ever put in here. Sure. And that's fixed a typo on the bakery blackboard in Eichenwald. <laughs> <It's, laughs> that's awesome. Um, I just want whoever reported that to them and found it, I just want you to know that I, I don't like you very much. <laughs> you're probably you're probably a Seahawks fan. It was me. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh but yeah, um, so I want to move on to uh, one of the last things that we're going to talk about, but it's probably the, in my mind, the most exciting thing that came out of BlizzCon, and that's the Overwatch League. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be getting a full-fledged Overwatch League, and it's not just, you know, some random, uh, some random third-party organization hosting their own league. We've seen that a bunch. It's not just a random, uh, you know. It's not even just a Blizzard putting on their own league in uh, akin to the Dota, um, the Dota International, or the League Championship Series. No, 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 no. Or, or the, or even the, um, the majors, um, the Dota majors and the uh, Counter Strike majors. No, no, no. This is something even more crazy than those things over blizzard 
is making Overwatch like the NBA or MLB or NFL or NHL or insert your favorite sport here. They're completely redefining and reshaping what esports can be in terms of a league. And we don't have a whole lot of details on it yet. <laughs> I was just going to say, no word yet on what that shape will be, no, but, but they but are reshaping are, it. <laughs> yeah, there are a couple of things that they have said. Uh, they want to make a local presence for these teams. How they're going to do that, we don't know yet. But let me tell you that we will let you know as soon as it happens. Uh, and any any and all Overwatch League um, info that comes out will be talked about on the show ad nauseum. So this is just the first taste. Um, so they mentioned that. They mentioned that there's going to be a combine, a, a, a like Overwatch draft combine where players that are on top of the ladder and top professional players are going to go to this combine and teams are going to be able to evaluate them and assumedly draft them onto their teams. So what does that mean for what does that mean for pro teams like current pro teams? We don't know yet. What does that mean for future pro teams? We don't know yet. What is it? Okay, I'm, I'm, you get the point. We don't know a lot of the details, but what we do know is that it's going to be awesome. That we here at High Noon Podcast are on in for the long run. Um, and in that vein, actually, I, I talked with. Uh, I'm not going to announce it officially yet because I'm still working out a couple of details, but. Uh, I am planning on speaking with a prominent member of the business of esports uh, community uh, about the Overwatch League and its implications for Overwatch, for Blizzard, for esports in general. I'm going to be trying to talk with him, and hopefully we'll have that interview uh, on the show. No details yet, but keep an eye out on Twitter when that official announcement comes out. But, yeah, Deathblow. What what were your initial thoughts when they announced the Overwatch League? Like, were you expecting it? Did you like? I mean, we well, were kind we of knew expecting a league they sent out letters sort. to people that were going to BlizzCon, so we knew there was going to be a league announcement before uh, BlizzCon kicked off. Yeah. So I was definitely expecting something to happen. I wasn't expecting this level of risk taking, I guess, or like yeah. uh, you know, it, it's it's risky. Like this is makes me a little nervous because this could this has just all sorts of potential it could be the greatest thing it could literally redefine the way we look at esports for Mm -hmm. every other game that ever comes out Mm -hmm. and we even maybe redefine some of the pre-existing games it's possible not saying it's going to happen i'm just it's possible yeah um it also could just be a huge miserable failure that gets mocked and made fun of for the rest of time and is I don't see it being anywhere in between either. <laughs> like, I really think it has to be one or the other. Yeah. So uh, I love that it's in Blizzard's hands. I think yeah. they're the right people to be doing it. And I'm going to be rooting like heck for them to succeed. I just am waiting to say how confident I am that they'll succeed until we get those other details and we get that additional information. But I mean, the, there's no reason not to be excited. Like it, just because we'll joke about it doesn't mean it's going to like be a blight on blizzard or be a huge problem or anything like mm-hmm. that. Like it'll just be like, uh, I, I don't know. People will just compare things that get announced to overwatch league. Cause it looks so awesome. Yeah. I mean, Serena Williams is in the video yeah. and crusher 99 is a household name. Now everybody knows it. It's on billboards and things like that. You know, it, it, <laughs> they, they sold it. Wait, is crusher 99 a real person or did they just make it up for that? Uh, they made it up. Oh, okay. I was going to say, is I that like a meme that I just didn't know about? No, no, uh, not, at least not that I knew about either. So uh, jokes uh, where neither of us are in on the joke if yeah. it is. But yeah, so I don't know. It's it's completely unknown. It's hard. It's hard to give a solid opinion about when we don't have uh, a lot of the details. And you know, we uh, A Smith, one of our patrons, uh, like tweeted at Ask Joshi and was like, "You should go on on High Noon Podcast and talk about the the Overwatch League." He goes, "I know nothing about it. Like, how yeah. can I do such a thing?" <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, all we have is is the hype, and yeah. maybe it's feeling burned by Sombra and just you know yeah. the, the the hype train there and how that was handled. I don't know how to feel about this. I'm I'm in this kind of awkward half in half out yeah. state with with Overwatch League, and I, I'm very excited for the potential and very nervous that it can't live up 
to the hype that they laid out. Well, for here's what I will say about it. <clears throat> uh, there's a couple of uh, revolving factors around it. So, a what I will say is that the literal CEO of T-Mobile was like in. Uh, like in on it like he officially like invited uh, one of the South Korean players to the combine um, so like the big name like sponsors are there um, mm-hmm. and I think just based on some of the things that I've been reading in um, esports business and like some things that some people who I'm not going to name because they might be on the show next week um, <laughs> have said about the business of esports um, is that uh a couple of weeks ago, Mark Cuban actually talked about how he was kind of weary about investing in esports right now, um, and people, you know, took that out of context and were like, "Oh, Mark Cuban says esports is a bad investment." Blah 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 blah. blah. It's like, no, that's not actually what he said. He said that he's weary of investing in it right now. Um, there's not a ton of um, you know infrastructure set up to like make the uh, investment of like a large investment by a big company like a T-Mobile, like a, you know, these non-endemic brands that, you know, normally would be sponsoring NFL teams. There's not a like consistent and a, uh, a safe place and a safe venue to invest into teams. It's like buy your own team, take on all the risk. And, uh, you know, if it pays off, it pays off. And if it doesn't, then, um, well, you just, you've got yourself a team now. You got yourself a bunch of like eighteen to twenty-two year old kids to like watch over and be your literal product, um, and I think Overwatch League is going to try to position itself as that venue to allow like legit investors to invest in something that's more familiar, uh, something that's like an NBA, something that's like an NFL and NHL, where there's a defined league. The league is you know backed by blizzard and it's initial sponsors which i'm assuming t-mobile is in on because they were all over the overwatch world cup um t-mobile mvp um that was yeah they were yeah, they were the definitely big in this one. yeah and i mean i think it gives a um like it makes sense like razor being a sponsor like right they're an endemic brand to gaming like they like like it's a no brainer why Razor is sponsoring something like this. But like if we wanted something like uh I don't know, McDonald's or something, like that's not Bud Light. <laughs> yeah, Bud Light. That's not endemic to gaming, right? Uh, maybe not Bud Light. There's some like ethical issues with that. But um maybe not, I don't know. Um but like those non endemic brands that end up like putting a lot of money into these things and like being the official sponsor of Overwatch League. Like who's going to pay me to do all the voiceovers for Overwatch League? Like hello. Uh it's not go- it's going to be the non-endemic brands that end up investing, but they need like if you're not talking to like gamers, right? Like the, you know, chief marketing officer of or whoever is handling the account for uh Bud Light or Anheuser-Busch is not probably not a huge gamer and you're not gonna be able to be like dude esports is awesome like gaming is awesome it's the way of the future like dude you get it right and like just invest in overwatch like they're gonna be like um so you want me to spend how many tens of thousands if not more on what video games um and there's how much risk and what like the like you need to have that backbone of structure right like that needs to be there um and i'm hoping and at least from what I've seen so far, it seems like Overwatch League is positioning itself to be that sort of structure. So I've got a yeah. lot of hopes for it. I'm excited from that side of it, the esports and esports industry and esports business side of it, and also just because we're going to have an Overwatch League. Like, come on, how right? exciting can that be? We've been literally talking about how what did we think the league would look like and how would it run Mm -hmm. since before episode one because as you can tell we've had a season one and now we're in season two and there's no proposed end date because there's no rhyme or reason to how these tournaments are going there's no downtime off season where it makes sense for us to to take a little break or anything like that so Mm -hmm. uh we we're super super interested and really the only thing about it that's worrisome to me is that from everything I've seen, mm-hmm. there's not a whole lot of place for Cloud9 in this equation. There's not a whole lot of place for Envious. There these the orgs that currently already exist, I could be completely wrong. Mm-hmm. 
but there doesn't appear to be a ton of you know opportunity for them to get involved here and well, if they, they don't have the yeah. support of the entire east current esports mm -hmm group in the, in the game it's gonna it's gonna be a little tough but when you have the backing of the people that make it and a huge player base yeah. i guess you don't need it well, well what see. from what i understood like i think the the team owners are going to be in on it i think it's going to be like kind of like the nba where they take some part of the ownership of the league i think um i know that they said that the it like the league is going to be set up in a way that is beneficial for the owners as well, the team okay. owners. Now, what does that say for like you know, Cloud Ten that doesn't exist yet that wants to get into the space? Like, I I don't know, be a billionaire or something. Like, when was the like? How often do new sports teams get formed? Not never. that often. <laughs> not never, but not oh, very right. often. Expansion teams happen. It's um, a it's a huge event. It's like a it's once every thirty big. forty years. Yeah, like at least like you know fives to tens of years at the very minimum um, yeah it depends it depends on the sport, depends on the you sport know, I, for sure my, my brain works like football and it's it's been 32 teams in the league for for quite some time yeah i don't uh, uh the texans i think were the newest team right the texans oh, they, but they were like, the oilers right right and they just there's um out. it was the the jags and the panthers i believe are the last two teams to get added to like the NFL. actual like new net new right. teams gotcha right so, franchise with, with an expansion draft and everything like that right so who knows i mean basketball i think does it a little bit uh a little bit more um i know they had like the the magic and the Toronto Raptors right up here in like the uh, mid to early to mid nineties. Um, and then like the, I think the thunder or the wildcats are new team. I don't know. There's a lot of, um, there's some, there's some possibility for it, but like it's, I think that we like, we might start seeing um, the transition from the wild, wild West to the, this is the league and this is the corporate so, like I think we might start like the launch of the over of Overwatch League. I think is going to like be a monument. It's going to be monumental, momentous, monumentous. I don't. know. It's going to be momentous because I think it's going to see it's going to start the transition from the wild, wild west. Like officially, the transition from the wild west of esports into the like corporatization of esports, um, for better or for worse. You know, we'll we'll have to see and we'll you know obviously be along for the long ride one way or the other but um you know i'm i'm super excited from all aspects of it uh i just want to learn more i just wanted more overwatch league merch to be available for me to buy at blizzcon yeah but yeah that's a whoo there's a lot of stuff, and we're going to be talking more in depth about even more of this stuff in weeks to come. But I think that's going to be just about it for this week. Death, do we have any last minute uh, things we missed that we want to talk about? We want to throw in there? Nothing that comes to mind. I think it was a, a chock full episode, so we we got through it. We did it, man. Yeah, we did <laughs> it. And I'm smelling delicious, delicious food that I want to go down and eat. So uh, let's wrap it up. Deathblow, where can we find you on the internet, buddy? Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash D3ATH underscore BL0W, or you can just go to highnoonpodcast.com and get all the links from the author's page. Yes, you can also find me on highnoonpodcast.com. We've got all the links to all the stuff. Check out highnoonpodcast.com. And also check out our Twitter, at highnoonpodcast on Twitter. We are going to be announcing that giveaway very, very shortly once I actually figure out the details, and you'll you'll be able to bring home one of these little guys. And for those of you listening in podcast world, it's a Pachimaru. Pachimaru, Pachimaru. How's it packaged? Can you can you it's squeeze like, it and make it uh, make it make the sound? Um, I mean, I can take it out of the package. I mean, oh, I have yeah, extra. Do I mean, one of these is, do one of these is mine, so this one will be mine. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's the the hard plastic around it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's one it's one of these bad boys. <laughs> um, it's literally the most adorable thing in the world. Uh, he's just poking his head out. Okay, I'm I'm gonna cry because it's so cute. Um, but <laughs> keep an eye out on Twitter for that. We are gonna be posting that soon and uh, all the good stuff there. But um, thank you, uh, last minute. Thank you to uh, Matcherino.com for being one of our partners from season one. 
And also thank you to Adam Hoek, who created the awesome outro music that we will be uh, playing in just a second. Also, thank you to all the patrons who support us every day, all day, every day, every month, and come chat with us in uh, in Discord. And besides that, I think the only other thing is, is hi, Nen. Got his boots and he put on his hat. Threw the coin away that same day. In his past, and he's not looking back. He says, Finding mine now guides my way. He's not good, but he sure ain't bad. He'll make amends for the sins that he has. He says, I'll change the world one bullet at a time till I find mine.